So after a, a nice talk on various types of alignment by methane, let me tell you why mechanical alignment is still the gold standard and will remain to be the gold standard. So if you see, for me, you know, a mechanical alignment is the way to go. The line passing from the center of the hip to the center of the ankle should always pass to the center of the knee. And that is what I aim for. You know, we all know the, the poorly aligned knee can result in, in all these things, decrease, decreased survivorship, increased poly wear, early cement failure. But the question is, and more so after hearing Mithin's talk, how do you define a poorly aligned knee? Because he just told you there are so many types of alignments there. You know, kind of the functional you're going to hear about, the kinematic you're going to hear about, the constitutional alignment, and the whole classification which he divided into nine types. It really makes the whole thing a little confusing for me. And I really don't know, even though Mithen did try to tell us that, you know, how can we know what native anatomy was uh, so many years ago. And the kinematic guys, what they try to tell us is that reproduce the native alignment and cut the tibia little varus, the femur little valgus, you know, and all those things which, which are fine and which do work, but I have my own reservations against them. If you see the talks which are given by the kinematic alignment guys, and I've heard so many of them, they always try to, you know, find out what is the reason for patient dissatisfaction. And of course, we all know that the patient dissatisfaction in TKR is quite high as compared to the hips. It's very low in the hips, maybe as high as 25%. And the kinematic guys always blame the alignment as one of the main causes of patient dissatisfaction. And you should know that there are so many other reasons why you may get patient dissatisfaction, why you get a painful knee. And you should look for these causes, not just blame the alignment and you know say that, OK, if you get a kinematically aligned knee, then you can solve these problems. You've got to look for so many reasons which are going to be there. And uh, you know, if you get these kind of cases, severe virus, severe valgus, that's what we deal with, all of you here. How do we know what the native alignment was? You know, somebody made a point day before yesterday that you should take x-rays at 25 years and store them. I think that might be a good idea when you have non-arthritic knees and you keep those x-rays. Otherwise, how are you going to get a native alignment? What do you know it is when you get these kind of knees? And therefore, if you get them to neutral, you're not going to go wrong. And this is such an easy technique which our seniors have taught us. Distal end, distal femur at 90 degrees to mechanical proximal tibia at 90 degrees. You know, uh, rotate the femoral component, get equal flexion extension gaps. And for your extension gap uh, balancing, I told you in my, uh, I showed you in my case, which I demonstrated, you've got to do the releases. And for balancing in flexion for me, it is to rotate the femoral component. And it's a very standard technique which now I have been using for more than 20 years with consistently good results. Uh, it is also very easy to understand, you know, the distal femoral cut affects only the extension gap, the posterior cut affects only the flexion gap, and if you want to alter both the gaps in the proximal tibial cut does that. And this is a very easy algorithm to follow whenever you are, uh, you know, wanting to balance the knee and get equal flexion and equal extension gap. So this is uh, what one can do, and it's not very difficult. We all know the effects of malalignment, and there are enough papers in the literature, and none of the current studies in the kinematically aligned knees have these kind of numbers, and this study showed in 8,000 plus knees that there is definitely a significantly failure rate in the neutrally aligned knees, and if the component was more than three degree virus leads to early failure. Another big study, uh, which was by the uh, Merrill Ritter group again, which does show that cement fails early if there is a more than three degree virus cut. So I think, you know, there are enough studies, but not enough long term kinematically aligned studies with these numbers to show us. Again, there are enough, uh, you know, finite element studies to show that in a poorly aligned knee, uh, which is not neutrally aligned, the cement fails early and so does the polyethylene. And here we have stalwarts like Dr. Anavad, John Insal, Ritter, who have shown, you know, successful results, more than 90% you know, survivorship at 20 years. So why are we arguing success? You know, this is the kind of results which mechanically neutral uh, aligned knees are showing us. 
One of my biggest problems with kinematically aligned knees is how do you know that it is 3 degree virus unless you have tools like the robo which you have been seeing since yesterday. And then, you know, you have to have some navigation. Otherwise, freehand is very difficult to reproduce what Stephen Howell tells us, you know, cut this, measure this. I don't think it's really practical. Uh, we all talk about kinematic alignment in uh, primary knees, but do we talk about kinematic alignment in revision knees? If we can extrapolate that to revision, why not? Then nobody talks about the kinematic alignment in revision knees. They, everybody wants to cut at 90 degrees. So, so the, what's the farce in then the primary knees? So today, as in 2023, I perform my TKAS conventional technique no robo, no navigation yet, even though Pune is the robotic capital of Pune, has 15 of India, 15 plus robos in my city. But still, till date, I haven't used it, uh, though I have tried each one of them in my own OR. I believe in the mechanical uh, alignment. That's the gold standard. And these are my long-term results to show you just a few of them doing well at more than 15 years. And so here is why the mechanical alignment has never failed. It definitely reduces the erector moment arm, increases uh, uh, the life of the poly and the cement, and uh, definitely prevents instability and pain, and therefore the longevity is good. So I still don't want to change because mechanical axis is so much reproducible. It has worked for me, and my numbers of knee replacements are going up every year, so I really don't find any compelling reason for me to change. With that, thank you very much for your kind attention. and. Special thanks to uh, all the APK's board members for being here and to the national and international faculty on behalf of Sachin and myself. Thank you very much.